guys in this next section we're going to be looking at video content and crafting videos that really convert I just want to start with a reminder that the whole purpose of creating these videos is to send laser targeted pre-qualified traffic to our offers what I mean by pre-qualified is that they've already clicked through from our video so we know they must be at least a little bit interested in our stuff but the more excited interested or intrigued we can make our traffic the higher our conversion rates are going to be Let's talk for a moment about product matching. We've already researched the niche. We understand what our market's needs, issues, and pain points are. The next thing we can do is to match a product to the market and then decide what sort of video we want to use to promote it with. Affiliates these days are spoiled for choice when it comes to selecting a product to promote to their market. You're probably already familiar with ClickBank, which is a great resource for information products and software. Pay.com's another alternative which tends to showcase more software than ClickBank. Alternatively, we can always look towards joint ventures directly with product owners, or if we're operating within the make money niche, we can look to websites like JVZoo or Warrior Plus. The ClickBank marketplace offers us some really helpful metrics on how well a product does. For example, I always look for a product with a decent payout so that we can get the most from every click that we send to a sales page. And the other helpful metric is gravity. Gravity indicates how many affiliates have made at least one sale of the product for any given month. Obviously checking out the sales page of any product you're considering promoting is worth doing for yourself to see if it makes an impact, but I quite like choosing products with high gravity because it usually means that their sale process is successful. If you're interested in promoting Warrior Special Offers through video, then you should definitely check out warriorplus.com. You can sign up using your Warrior Forum username, and by being affiliates, we're eligible to look up available offers for WSOs that we can promote. Warrior Plus gives us some great information for each WSO that's available to promote. It includes the number of sales it's had, the visitor conversion rate, the visitor value, the average commission price, and the commission rate. And it always pays to check out the refund rate just to make sure that you're looking to promote a quality product. Of all of the metrics to pay the most attention to there, the one you really want to focus on is visitor value. This figure represents the amount you can expect to make for every visitor that you send to the product sales page. Affiliate networks are also a great resource for products to promote. Just understand that affiliate networks pay marketers like us to generate leads for other partner companies. So what we're normally getting paid for is for the generation of a valid lead, not necessarily for the sale of a product itself. That means that the payouts are usually lower but the conversion rates are higher. Let's look at an example. So here I am logged into my Peerfly account and you can see here a list of the current offers available. Just using an example, the Mate 1 offer, if I open up the sample lead capture page, you can see that it looks like this. So what happens is this. We send traffic to the lead capture page. They fill in their information and create their account and we get paid on the creation of that account. It means a lead for the company, mate1.com, and it means money for us. In this case, for the mate1 offer, we get paid $4.50 for every person that creates an account. Now you can see over here that there's another figure, EPC, and for that particular offer, it's nine cents. EPC stands for earning per click, and it's exactly the same sort of figure as the visitor value was that we looked at in the Warrior Plus before. It's the amount that we can expect to earn for every visitor that we send to that lead capture page. If we can create traffic for less than nine cents per visitor, then obviously we can turn a profit. Just make sure that when you're selecting offers to promote, they accept traffic from video. You'll see that I've also included Amazon under affiliate networks. Amazon's a little bit different from the other networks because it involves the sale of actual physical products, or it can also involve the sale of information products through Kindle and that sort of thing. Whilst the percentage commissions for Amazon tend to be on the low side, what I really like about it is that it doesn't matter where you send a prospect to on the Amazon site, as long as they purchase something, you get a credit for it. For that reason alone, it's worth considering and there are a lot of people making a lot of money promoting Amazon. Once we have our market matched to our product, we then just decide on what type of video we're going to create. So what types of videos do we have? The main videos that I like to use are reviews, testimonials, instructional or training videos, presentation videos, or what I call entertainment videos. 
So I just want to start with a few general tips about creating attention grabbing videos. The first 10 seconds are the most important part of our video. The second most important part is the end and I'll explain why in a minute. But in the first 10 seconds we really want to demand the attention of our audience by doing one of the following four things. The first option is to state clearly the benefit that our viewers get for watching our video all the way to the end. For example, at the end of this short video, I'm going to show you where you can get one month's supply of ACI Berry absolutely free. It can be a good thing to use if you don't want to sound overly salesy. There are some circumstances where we don't want our video to sound like a pitch. By making it clear to people what the benefit is of watching the video, it just means that we can take a conversational tone without losing their interest. Another thing we can do is to indicate that we're going to provide key information that's not readily available anywhere else, which we know our market is desperate for and which will address their need, problem or pain. For example, I'm going to show you the exact three steps you can take right now which are guaranteed to get your ex to call you back before the end of the day, even if you haven't spoken in months. Now if you're some poor person who's broken up with your ex, you're desperate to get back with them, you can't get them to communicate with you, the thought of being able to convince them to call you back before the end of the day, I mean that's a pretty compelling sort of intro. And that's the sort of thing we want to be saying to them right off the bat to keep them watching. Next, consider creating a point of differentiation between the product we're reviewing and the competing products. For example, if you've been told that expensive supplements, dangerous surgery or miracle berries are the only fast way to lose weight, you've been lied to. In this short video, I'm going to show you how four simple but effective exercises and one small alteration to your diet can literally strip flab from your belly and pounds from your hips in just weeks. Okay, so what this does, without coming out and just full on slamming other products, you can see how I've used negative words and associated them with other products. Expensive supplements, dangerous surgery, miracle berries. It creates doubt about the other products in the mind of the people that we're talking to and it gives us the lead in to explain why the product we're promoting is a better option. And finally, a great thing to do is to create intrigue through a question. For example, are you committing the number one sin most women are guilty of that can triple the likelihood of infidelity in your relationship? I mean, most people would want to answer no to that question, right? But it's going to create that doubt. What if I am committing this sin? What's the sin? How can I avoid it? These are the questions that that sort of intro instantly creates in our audience and they keep watching because they want to know the answer. The other general tip I have for you is always, always, always use a call to action. Okay guys, we always want to let them know what we want them to do at the end of the video. Tell them where to click and what they're going to get if they do it. The last thing we want after we've made this fantastic video and we've got this sales funnel already and set up is for them to wander off onto a different part of YouTube and forget all about us, okay? So always don't be afraid to ask for the click or the subscription or the like, whatever you want them to do. And I'm actually going to show you how to achieve that in the PDF and I go into a bit more detail about it and actually give you a couple examples of a call to action that I use at the end of a lot of my videos. So I just want to talk now about the types of videos that work really well for lead generation and I want to start with reviews. Okay, reviews are a great way to promote just about any digital or physical product, software or service. It's really, really flexible. It works best if we can show that we've actually purchased the item that we're reviewing. For example, we could do out of the box videos where we've purchased an item from Amazon or pretty much any retailer. We take it out of the box, we show that we've purchased it and it proves to people that we did actually buy the product and so, you know, we're qualified to give an opinion about it. If it's an information product, that's fine. We can just do a screen capture showing us on the purchase page of the product or of us actually using the product, for example, if it was some software. So let me break down a script that we can use to create video reviews that are effective at getting people's attention and getting them to click through to our offer. Number one, I really recommend that you use one of the tactics I mentioned earlier to grab the viewer's attention. Mission critical is getting them to watch all the way through to the end of our video. Number two, if possible, show the viewer that we've purchased the product and made use of it. This is a really good demonstration of social proof and it builds faith in the viewer that we are legitimate. Number three, explain the benefits of the product. Just a quick tip guys, we can actually get the benefits from the sales page. It's a really easy way of just going through the benefits and we can actually discuss whether the product delivers on what the sales page promises it will. It provides a nice contrast for the viewer and it doesn't sound like we're simply there pimping someone else's product because we might get something from it. Along that same line, number four, outline any negatives to make the review sound balanced. 
Number five, we want to state the main difference the product has made for us, the reviewer, or its intended audience. Here's where we can use the gold nuggets that we discovered right at the start of our market analysis. Really focus on the need, problem, or pain point that they experience and how the product helps solve it. Number six, if we have any available, we can add in testimonials. Number seven, we should list any bonus that the viewer gets for purchasing through our link if we're going to be redirecting them straight to a sales page. And number eight, our call to action. We want to tell them what to do. Click the link below the video to get more information, to get a bonus, to get free access to a four week video course, whatever it is that we might be doing. We want to make sure that we make that request, tell them what to do, tell them how to do it and make them do it now. Product reviews are a really great way to have people directed straight from YouTube to a product page. If people are actually searching for reviews, then they're at least usually considering buying the product. So the quicker we can get them onto the sales page, warmed up and ready to go, the better things are. It's not to say that we should never use reviews to lead people through to a squeeze page or some other method that we're going to use to offer them value and create a relationship with them. But this is one method that new people can use to really, to really create some quick cash. The next type of video we're going to look at is testimonials. Like reviews, testimonials are a great way to promote almost any product, but does so from a this is my story standpoint. People love comparing themselves to others. So when done right, testimonials can be a powerful way to generate leads through video. The biggest thing that impacts on testimonials is believability. Testimonials should be specific in terms of results, the time taken to achieve them, and things like that. If our testimonials are general, airy-fairy, don't give any specifics or just don't come across as genuine, people on YouTube will call us out about it. Have a look for some reviews and you're going to see a lot of comments down the bottom that are negative, particularly if the review doesn't come across well. Once again, it's always a huge advantage to have actually purchased the product or be able to get a testimonial from someone who has. My advice is to avoid purchase testimonials. Number one, they usually suck. People are being paid five bucks to give these two minute opinions and they invariably are bad. Number two, people are getting really good at sniffing them out on YouTube and when they do, their reaction is really, really negative. It's a great way to destroy your reputation and it only takes one bad video. The other thing to consider is to make sure you do your due diligence and comply with the FTC endorsement guidelines which you can find at www.ftc.gov. So let's look at the type of script we can use for testimonial videos. As always, number one, grab their attention. When we do this, even though it's a testimonial about success you might have had with a product, make sure at the start we make it clear what's in it for the viewer, not necessarily what we've gotten out of it. Number two, again, if we can, show the viewer that we've purchased the product. Next, we're going to move into our story. Here's where we can use the gold nugget we researched earlier. What need, problem or pain point did you experience and how did the product solve it? This helps in building audience empathy. They're going to realize that you've suffered like they're suffering, you found a solution, it worked, and now you feel great, or life has gotten easier. Whatever you have, they're going to want to have. Number four, list any negatives again to make the testimonial balanced. It's okay, particularly if in fact there are negative, to just come straight out and say that. People don't expect every product to be perfect, and if things sound too good, people are going to start thinking that they are. Number five, what difference did the product make for you? Be specific. If you lost 14 pounds in two weeks, say you lost 14 pounds in two weeks. If you've been migraine free for the first time in 13 years, say that. If the new camera you've purchased has got relatives and friends asking you who your professional photographer is, say that. Next, explain the benefits of the product. Once again, we can get these from the sales page. I just want to remind you that benefits are different from features. Features are the things that a product has that result in the benefits. What people really want to hear about is the benefits. If you feel like you've dealt with this enough in the earlier sections, that's fine. Number seven, list any bonus again they get for purchasing through your link if you're going to redirect them straight to a sales page. And number eight, as always, the call to action. Testimonials can be one of the most powerful ways to convert normal viewers into people who are interested in your product. But just to reiterate, the things that make or break a video testimonial is believability and specifics. If you can add those two things in, you're gonna have a winning video. The next type of video we're gonna look at is instructional or training videos. These types of videos are a great way to really offer value to our audience 
and showcase the fact that we're an expert in our subject matter. These videos tend to be longer than reviews or testimonials, but if our content's amazing, it'll help keep people watching. When creating screen capture training videos, take the time to edit out the extra ums, ahs, and other interruptions that detract from the content. In terms of keeping people's attention, it's really important to stay on topic. So if you're doing, for example, a tutorial about how to install WordPress on a website, don't get distracted by talking about how you've just bought this new theme and you love it and it's great. Stay on topic. People have come to your video for a certain and specific reason. You're going to lose them if you don't deliver what they've come for. So let's look at the video script we can use for instructional and training videos. Once again, grab attention. It's actually okay to also take a little time to introduce yourself in instructional videos, particularly for branding purposes. If you do though, keep it brief and get into the content as quickly as possible. Number three, we want to explain exactly what it is that we're going to be showing our audience. Don't be afraid to pump yourself up a little bit and get the audience excited about what they're about to be shown. Number four, give real value. Again, here's where we can use our gold nugget we researched earlier. What are our consumers need to know to help with their need, problem or pain? Show them exactly what to do and give them that aha moment. Don't underestimate the fact that you can relieve a pain even when you're giving some practical instruction. Let me use an example. I remember the first time I was trying to set up a squeeze page using Optimize Press, even though they have tutorial videos available for that theme, there are just a couple of things that I couldn't get right. It was driving me insane. And I finally found a video that explained it really clearly, really quickly, and after the hours I'd spent trying to find a solution, I could have hugged the bloke that gave it to me. After we've delivered massive value with our content, recap with a summary or conclusion. Next, once again, list any bonuses they get for purchasing through our link if we're going to redirect straight to a sales page, otherwise a call to action. Redirecting from an instructional video is particularly effective if we're going to try and get someone to opt into our list because we can use the promise of more helpful videos as an inducement for their email address. I really like using instructional and training videos as a way to list build. The next type of video we can use is what I call a presentation video. Now presentations can otherwise follow the same general guidelines as a training video, but in this instance we might not be showing someone exactly how to do something, but we can still offer massive value by imparting relevant information to them. Presentations are often easy to make with free video production software like Movie Maker or a cheap paid option like Animoto. The key to a good presentation video is combining text, imagery and voiceover and occasionally music to deliver good content or information to our viewers. The next type of video is what I call an entertainment video. It's really just those videos that are made as eyeball magnets and unlike most of the other video types don't follow the same rules of engagement and offering value. In some niches it's possible to still generate leads with videos that are especially entertaining. Fail compilations are a good example of just how much attention these types of playlist videos can receive. By making a playlist or a series of video clips relevant to a niche, we can still put a spin on it that generates traffic to a site or offer. For example, if I was going to promote a product on how to improve your golf swing, I could create a series of amazing golf shots or trick shots. At the end of the video, we could simply include a call to action stating that if the viewer wants to be able to make shots like this, click the link below for more information. If it was me, and this is what the product was offering, I'd even try and jazz that up a bit. For example, want to learn how to make shots like this even if you've got a 28 handicap in just weeks? Click the link below to find out how. Now, if you're a golfer like me, the thought of dropping those sorts of shots from a terrible handicap, like mine, is actually a pretty good inducement. I'd be clicking the link. YouTube actually allows us to create playlists using other people's videos as long as we give them credit for it. It's a quick, cheap way to create really engaging videos if we don't have our own footage to use. The key to this type of playlist or montage video is making sure that we include that call to action at the end and keep the content relevant to our offer. Whether we send traffic from a video to a squeeze page, a landing page, or directly to an offer, one thing that's really important that we have to do is to maintain continuity. What I mean by that is just to make sure that the progression from video to squeeze page to the email autoresponder series, and then ultimately to the offer, makes sense. For example, if I've done a video on how to improve the output on a DIY solar panel, if I'm going to redirect a person to my site, I should direct it to the part of the site that's all about DIY solar panels. There's no point directing them to a site that's simply about something as generic as green energy. For all I know, they're only interested in solar panels, they've got no interest in green energy, and I'm going to lose them because there's a disconnect in the subject matter. If we're not going to take the option of redirecting people straight to a sales page, and I have to say, 
a redirect from a video straight to a sales page is probably going to lead to the lowest level of conversions because people aren't as warmed up as they possibly could be with other methods like a squeeze page. But if we are using a squeeze or landing page, always be offering them more. Let them know that there are more great tips, insights or information if they click our link. Maybe it'll be a membership or a free PDF or a five week video course. Whatever it is, make sure it builds on the information we've already given, keeps adding to the relationship and is congruous with the offer that we're ultimately going to present them with. And I said it a moment ago, but it's worth saying again, always be offering value. You don't have to give away all your great stuff right off the bat, but have a think about the times you've come across someone who's given you exactly the information you needed, exactly the aha moment that you need to have, the very details that went to the core of your need, problem or pain. Have a think about the marketers whose email lists you're already on. What was it about them that made you want to be on their list and hear more of what they had to say? In all likelihood, they delivered great content exactly when you needed it. With this training, you're now equipped to do the exact same thing for your target market. And it doesn't matter which niche you want to operate in. Alright, well, well done guys. So now you have those four easy steps. Find a market. Match the product to the market that meets their needs. Create a video using one of the scripts I've provided you. And then direct your newfound traffic to your website or offer. Having finished these videos, you can now use the PDF ranking guide that's part of this product to optimize your videos and force them to the first page of YouTube and Google. You can start driving massive traffic to your website or offers. I want to thank you guys for listening. But in addition to that, I really want to encourage you to use the action plan that comes with this product to plan out and implement your blitz on video marketing. Even if you're completely new to it, you now have all the tools at your disposal to start making money with this technique. I really encourage you to give yourself the best chance at this. Put aside your other projects, put aside all of the other distractions. I know what it's like when you get in front of a computer and you've got your email going, you've got iTunes on, you've got people Skype messaging you. All right, you're only human, I, I totally understand. It happens to me all the time. But the best thing you can do is just put all of those distractions aside. Leave your email alone, turn your Skype off, iTunes down, and just spend some time really having a crack at this. Give yourself the opportunity to see what you can make of it. It's one of the quickest and easiest methods I've found to make money online. All right, now go get them. If you need any help, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Thanks.